welcome to a cool tutorial and it's one that I get a lot of questions about on videoschoolonline.com and the courses that I have it's about making sure you have the correct sequence settings for Adobe Premiere Pro or really whatever editing software you're using so that's what we're going to be covering today making sure that you have the right sequence settings and it's not as hard as you may think so we're going to start from the beginning. Say you are starting a project and you want to just create it from scratch, I'll go through that. So I'm just going to uh, start a new project. I will call this test. Okay, so once you create a new project, you will be able to import footage. Now let me go to my folder where I have some sample footage from a music video that I was doing graphics for. So I just dragged and dropped that footage into my project. Now it's in my project bin and I can see the settings for this, this, uh, this video right here. You see I ha it's 23,976 frames per second, that's the frame rate. And then the size is under video information 1920 by 1080. Now those are the basic things that you have to pay attention to when creating a new sequence. So if you want to create a new sequence, there's a few different ways. There's one, you can go up to File, New, Sequence. You can also hit Command-N if you're using a Mac or Control-N if you're using a PC. Or you can go down to this little sticky note post-it button. It's the new item button and then click Sequence. So either any of those will bring up this new sequence window. Okay, the thing about Adobe Premiere Pro is that it will automatically change the settings of your sequence to whatever your footage is if you want it to do that. So a lot of people get stuck up here with all these options. You can go in and customize the settings. So I, I know it's 23,976. You know, I can change that. And then the video frame size, 1920 by 1080. So that's good. And then this pixel aspect ratio, you know, all this stuff gets a little bit confusing and some of it's even a little bit beyond me in terms of, well, what's the real difference between DNX 145 1080i versus another P2 1080i? So you don't have to worry about that. That's the thing. What I do is just create a new sequence. It doesn't matter the settings. And then when you drag your new footage, whatever footage you have into the sequence, it will prompt you to change the settings. It says this clip does not match the sequence settings. Change sequence to match the clip settings. You can either keep it, say for example, if you know you want to have a different size or a different frame rate for your video, you can keep whatever settings you chose or you can change the sequence settings. So now I'm going to hit that change sequence settings and now this sequence has the right properties. And I can check those by going up to sequence, sequence settings. And then I can see, so it was 23,976 frames per second, 1920 by 1080 square pixels, 24 FPS time code. That's just the display format. It shows the preview file format. And this is great because now I know for sure that my sequence settings match the video that I'm using. So I hope that makes sense. And it's a really easy way to make sure that you have the proper sequence settings. And a lot of people get hung up on it, but it's not too difficult. So there you have it. If you have any questions, please let me know. I can explain this a little bit in depth uh, even further if, you, if it's still confusing, but I really hope you understand it now and you should all be able to find and get the perfect settings for your video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in another tutorial. Bye. Hey YouTube, you like that video? Well, please subscribe to the channel for more. Check out our website for articles, webinars, books, and more. And of course, check out our online course library, ranging on topics from video making, motion graphics, photography, starting a business, freelancing, to beer brewing, resume writing, adopting a cat, and much more.